Okay, I'm back with another film. It's about 50 million degrees in Australia. I don't know if you've seen the news, but Australia is basically melting. I mean, like roads are starting, the bitumen's melting. Um, so it's boiling here. Um, the reason I'm here is to talk about another film, and today's film is Vice, uh, the story of Vice President Dick Cheney. And we're gonna do our usual thing. Should you see the film? Should you see it in the cinema? Uh, then um, I'll talk about the film and then we'll talk in spoilers. I'm going to keep it fairly short today because this is one of those films where it's more talking about um, making a film about a political figure than the film itself. So should you see this film? I would say that if you like The Big Short, which was Adam McKay's uh, last film, um, and you like that style where you take current affairs and put a satirical spin on it, then you will really like this and you should go see it. Otherwise, you're into politics and you probably want to see this. If you're not, I don't think you need to see this and I definitely don't think you need to see it in the cinema. It's quite a small film and in fact might be better for people at home and they can maybe pause it and just let it wash over them. Um, that's it. I'm going to come back in a second and we'll get into this film. Okay, so uh, this is an Adam McKay film, and Adam McKay is quite famous for being like a real big hitter uh, comedy director and with his partner in crime, Will Ferrell, and they did Talladega Nights and um, Anchorman and a couple other films. And they're really, they're not bad, but they're not really my cup of tea. I find them a bit hit and miss. But then he made Big Short, uh, which was about the GFC, and um, that was very interesting. I'd read the book that it was based on and I thought he did a really good job in taking what could be quite a dry subject matter and making it hilarious and scary and satirical at the same time. And he's done the exact same formula for this, uh, looking at the Dick Cheney vice presidency slash presidency. It's funny because if you see uh, people talking about it, they will often say this is the Cheney Bush administration. Um, which you don't say anything about Trump. You don't go Trump Pence or Pence Trump. You just go really Trump because you know he's in charge. But already we are starting to look at the history of, of George W. Bush and how they got into Iraq and everything. So uh, the main thing that you want to know about this film, and especially uh, only a couple of hours ago, they got about 10 nominations and a lot of big hitting acting ones. So. Christian Bale plays Dick Cheney, Amy Adams, Lynn Cheney, Sam Rockwell, W, uh, George W. Bush, and um, then you have Jesse Plemons, who's kind of like the narrator, and uh, look, you've got a million other people. Who's, there's one more guy, Steve Carell, as Donald Rumsfeld. So these are big hitters, and they're all really, really good. And I think that's the thing which comes out of this is the acting across the board is really, really great. And, uh, but you've got to talk about Christian Bale. So Christian Bale is famous for transforming his body. And uh, if you've ever seen a, a quite a little known film called The Machinist, where he, there were rumors that he actually must have a disease or something, he lost so much weight. But recently the fighter, for instance, he changed his body shape, he was quite lean for that. And um, he's done other roles where he's put on more weight, but never as much as this to play Dick Cheney in the, um, even from the mid part of the film, but especially in the latter period. And he is absolutely fantastic. He gets the draw right, he gets the movement. I mean, it's a really tour de force. Um, Amy Adams is good, but I don't think great. I was a bit surprised by her nomination. Uh, Sam Rockwell steals every scene and, and probably deserves his um, nomination. The uh, writing and the way the film is constructed is uh, problematic at times. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in spoilers. But um, the way that he has constructed it is he has two devices going on. One is a biopic and uh, it's just, you know, you start from an inciting incident, which is uh, first seen Cheney being arrested for drunk driving in Wyoming, and then going through his, basically his political life. 
But then you also have this other thing with Jesse Plemons narrating um, how he is crossing paths with this important man. Um, they do break the fourth wall a couple times and there is a stinger, uh, there's a scene which is midway through the credits and I'll talk about that in spoilers. All in all, this is, look, this is a really good film. Uh, I'd be interested to see people who watch this and then go, well, I didn't know that he ran Halliburton's, the company which got all the contract work for the Iraq in, uh, invasion and wow, isn't that a bit of a conflict of interest? Uh, for those people, I think they really are the audience and they will be shocked. Uh, for people a bit more cynical like me already knew all that, there wasn't really that much new. Let's go to spoilers. Okay, so let's talk about the film now and I can be a bit more uh, straight shooting since we're in spoilers. So I'm assuming you've seen the film and one of the main things is they use Jesse Plemons as this narrator who we then find out by the end of the film has been killed even though he served in Iraq, he gets hit by a car, his heart is transplanted into Dick Cheney's and that's a lot of metaphorical work just to give you the image of Cheney with no heart and it's basically right at the point in the story where he's going to throw his uh, daughter Mary under the bus uh, because she's gay to support the other daughter in her political ambitions and they're making the statement that all through his life he has pretty much just done whatever he wanted to do in a very, uh, evil's not the right word, but in a very uh, yeah, greedy, um, very much just in his world view. Um, and the reason I'm choosing those words is sometimes you think people, they believe in a philosophy in which they do some strange things to get an outcome. But you watch this and really Cheney is just doing whatever he wants for his own power and it just happens to be that he identifies a Republican but he really doesn't seem to have a philosophy apart from making a lot of money and uh, withholding power. The other thing the film does a couple of times is it breaks the fourth wall and most uh, egregiously, because uh, I don't think it's very dangerous and hard to pull off breaking the fourth wall. Uh, for people who don't know, it's when the character kind of comes out of the film and talks directly to the audience. And um, he does this and he gives this kind of false apologia, which just doesn't ring true, which maybe was its point, I'm not sure. And it's really a laboured language and I didn't think it worked at all. So this film is a real mixed bag for me. Uh, I really liked some of the scenes. I liked the scenes which really are just telling more the biopic. But, uh, and the acting is fantastic. But really at the end of the film, you do not understand who Dick Cheney is. And you certainly don't have any psychological um, kind of uh, egress into how he operates. So to me, that's a real failing in a biopic that I don't know a little bit more about what makes Cheney tick, uh, apart from, you know, other people's hearts. So uh, I don't know if it works. I think it's a bit clunky overall. Um, the other thing I will mention is uh, the stinger, which is a mid uh, credit scene in which they're focus group and there's a couple of like Trump kind of guys who all don't care, what, they just want to attack someone after 9-11 and they're saying, oh, well, it doesn't matter who we attack and all that. And then there's one guy in there and goes, well, well wait a second, <laughs> Iraq had nothing to do with this. Why are you attacking Iraq? Um, and when he's challenged, he said, look, facts matter. We just work out factually what to do. And uh, the guy attacks him uh, for just articulating an opinion that he couldn't be. Um, that's probably the most damning thing which comes out of the film is from the time that Rumsfeld from the Nixon administration taught Cheney, who then took over under Bush, um, which then led to um, an undercutting of a lot of the institutions. They helped set up Fox. Um, then you had Obama. Uh, there's always these 
you know, uh, the cycle, political cycle changes, but there's this ongoing, um, very uh, rigid way forward, and you can see it's all bad. And then we now know that after Obama comes Trump, and um, whether you politically agree with him or not, um, you can see that there's this lack of philosophy of trying to help people where money's involved. Um, and that's probably where the film does shine a little bit. Okay, that's it. Look, I've got too many films to see. I'm just going to try and see all the Best Picture nominations. So I've got a couple to go. And then I'll start knocking off the other awards. So that if you watch this channel, you'll be really quite well versed by the time we get to the Oscars. Uh, I've got to go. I'm boiling. I might have to go and have a shower after this. Um, so if you like what I'm doing, hit like. Hit subscribe, then you'll always um, get my stuff. And if you hit the bell, you'll always know about it. And I'm on Twitter at Guru Eden. And I'll talk to you then.